Hey, Tar Jones here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I am Tar Jones, financial success coach and lifestyle designer, and I help women just like you use your income to create the lifestyle you desire. Um, if you are in need of coaching or one-on-one -on -one support to create a business or personal finance plan, click the link in the description box or head over to yourprettypennies.com backslash coaching to um, schedule a call with me. All right, so today I wanted to talk to you about how your attitude affects how you manage money. And I first learned about this PAC model, which is the parents, adult, or child attitude model or ego state, as some would call it, from this online driver responsibility course I just had to take. <laughs> so funny story, um, I accidentally, even though I drive this way to church all the time, accidentally ran a stop sign, but it's of like a very, it's like in the middle of like a neighborhood. I can't even believe there was a police officer there. Like it was like so random. Anyway, I accidentally ran a stop sign and got a ticket. So I pled for to get a lesser charge or whatever because it was like giving out three points and they didn't accept it and so I got a letter in the mail saying if I take this driver responsibility course like they won't put the three points on my license or whatever and this would be my first time actually getting a ticket I've gotten pulled over several times but I've never gotten a ticket this is my first time getting a ticket and it was three points and so if you take this driver responsibility course online like they, they'll send it to secretary of state it won't show up like it won't be reported to your insurance all of that so I took it and I tried to find a silver lining because it was long as heck and I couldn't, like, it annoyed my soul. But I did get something from it that was so good. So basically in this driver's responsibility course, it talks about this psychology principle called the PAC model, which is a parent, adult, child attitude model. Um, and I looked it up on YouTube to see if like it's really a thing and it is. Some people call it ego state, some people call it attitude. So um, I'm just going to go for the sake of this video, attitude, because we all know what that means, attitude. Um, and basically the premise of this idea is that your attitude, whatever attitude you're operating in, controls your behavior. So if you're acting like a parent, it controls your behavior. You, you, you behave like a parent. If you act like an adult, it'll control your adult behavior. It'll, it'll control your behavior as an adult. If you act like a child, you'll behave like a child. And so they were saying it in reference to driving, which makes which made complete sense. But I like took it and I was like, man, this applies to financial management and what I see, what I've seen in myself, what I still see in myself, when I see it other people and my clients. So I really wanted to kind of break this down into financial terms and like allow us to kind of take a step back before we approach how we manage money or before we start managing money to see what attitude we're in what type what are we feeling what mood are we in before we start spending before we start you know paying bills before we start doing anything with our finances let's check in with our attitude so let's talk more about this um so at any given time we are in one of these ego or attitude states parent child or uh, adult and so let's start with the first one which is parent the parent is made the parent attitude state is made up of experiences as young children with our parents or guardians or authority figures so this attitude has been developing within us since we were born all right and so it and it'll continue to develop well into our 60s which means how and what our parents and guardians acted that's how we can act like we can step into how they used to be and, uh, and attack our finances or manage our finances in a way that they used to and obviously this is not the best way because if you have parents who manage money poorly or if you have parents with a, a lack mindset or with a poverty mindset or still feel like they were on the struggle bus at all times for example i gave some things that you will often hear your parents say Turn the lights off. Money don't grow on trees. Save something for a rainy day. Sow some, save some, spend some. Save, spend, and share. Put some money away for the next financial recession. Or, you know, these comments. Some are good. Some are bad. 
Some are very wise. Some are like, mm, I'm going to need you to get up off that struggle, mom, like, or dad. Like, it's it's been 10 years since it's been a drought in your finances. We can act like we're not lacking. We can act like we're not poor anymore. And I actually know a friend of mine who talks like, in, like a part, the beginning of his uh, earlier years in life, him and his family were poor. Now they live in a nice community, one of the best communities in my city. Um, they own a church. They, you know, got all these things going for them, drive really nice cars, have really great careers. And he still views his family as if they're poor. And I'm like, do you know, like, the struggle bus left y'all, like, 15, 20, 25 years ago? Like, you're middle class. You're upper middle class, sir. Like, you're not even, you, you, he, in his mind, he sees himself as lower class but to the outside world he's upper middle class like his income his family's income and so I'm like I'm gonna need you to let that go because that was the attitude of towards money of your parents what they went through is not what you went through therefore what they say and what they do doesn't should not apply to you because the circumstances have changed all right and so like I said this attitude state can have both positive and negative uh, attributes. So some negative attributes of this state is you could be critical, you can be punishing, you can be demanding, you can be condescending. Um, it, it's based on how your parents treated you. So when it came to money, did your parents withhold money from you? You might start withholding it from your spouse if or your children. Did your parents always tell you, yell at you about using too much of water, using too much of the tissue, using too much toothpaste, using too much of this, using too much of that? My grandmother was like that. But within reason because she sucked she went through the major depression right she went through the great depression so therefore in her mind everything needs to be rationed very minimally just in case they need some extra you know so, but when i manage my daughter and when i manage my household i don't tell her don't only use this amount of tissue on. don't run that water turn that water i don't do all of that because in my mind it's all abundant like and so whether it is or not, it's not necessarily a good thing that I don't, you know, uh, teach her how to turn the lights off when she leaves a room. I'm not saying that's good nor bad because it is wasting electricity. When she leaves the water running, it is wasting water. But I'm just saying my parent style versus my grandmother's parent style or my parents' parent style is totally different. And then some positive attributes is encouraging, supportive, sympathetic, nurturing. Um, these are habits. Our parent attitude state is one, it, the habits that are within those are some of the hardest to break because you literally kept them since you were born. Like you've literally been learning them from your parents and that is your norm. And so especially as you get married or as you start having children and then they have their own ideals, you'll find yourself clashing and, uh, really struggling with your parents your parent attitude or operating in your parent attitude and then expecting somebody else to listen to you because that's the point of the parent attitude you approach finances and other people in the area of finances in a way where you're right they're wrong you're trying to teach them something you're you're demanding you're condescending you're looking over them you're punishing you're critical you know and so that's not the best state to manage money in right that's not the best state to teach your family how about money teach your kids about money in like that's not the proper state now what is the proper state is the next one the a in the pac model which is adult so this one is based on logic on rationality on calculated risk wise decision making so this is the area where we want to dwell in when it comes to managing our finances for our home when it comes to teaching our children how to manage money when it comes to having family meetings about money all those different things this is the attitude we want to step into when we're doing all of those things all right so this one develops around one years of age and it lasts through our lifetime. When operating in this attitude, you are logical, rational, and a good decision maker. You are saying yes or no and managing your money from a place of wisdom and sound judgment. Not because you feel like it. You're not doing something because you feel like it, which is a child state, which we'll get into. Or because that's the way your parents did it, which is the parent state. 
all you're doing is saying, hmm, I researched this or someone told me this. It made sense. I created a plan for this. I'm going to follow the plan. All right. You research and you created beliefs and habits based on success, not emotion and not habit. Right. Not because of my parents did it, but because I've researched the success rate of managing my money this way. I've researched the success rate of teaching my children about finances this way. I researched how to talk to my husband about money. I don't come off in a, ch in a condescending way and I don't become childless or reckless with money. I am an adult. Therefore, I remain in the adult state when it comes to managing my finances. All right. The third one is the child state. Now, as a young, a child, uh, only child, not an only child, come on, Tara. As the youngest of six children, I can be a little in this state if I'm not careful. If I'm not um, being intentional about how I manage money and if I'm not tuning into how I'm feeling, this can be the state that I'm in. And one thing I want you to realize on this video, as you listen to this video, is kind to kind of identify what type of person you are and what attitude you lead with, whether it's the parent, the adult, or the child, and be very mindful of that. So as a financial success coach, that doesn't mean that I'm perfect. That doesn't mean I have to, uh, that doesn't mean that I've made it or I'm an expert in managing money. Things can change at the drop of a dime. And my natural habits, my learned behavior is still very much a part of me, even though I have all this knowledge and wisdom about finances. I still have to check myself. I still have to put boundaries and guardrails and things in place and habits in place and rules for myself to make sure that I manage my money as an adult as a financial success coach, not as a rebellious child, right? Because that is my nature. My nature is to be rebellious, to be impulsive, to be childlike, to be carefree. That is who I am in the essence of me. And for many areas of my life, it works well. I'm a great friend. I'm like super spontaneous. I'm super ambitious. I'm fun to be around. But when it comes to managing money, it is not the time to be fun, to be spontaneous, to be on a whim, to be free spirited, right? It's time to be disciplined and to be adult like and to be rational, right? So let's get into this childlike state. So the child attitude is based on like the natural being of who you are. It's adaptive, it's rebellious, it's childlike, all right? And it develops at birth and it develop and it stays with you long into your 60s. So I'm 30, listen, I know me, I know who I am, I know how I am, I'm very self-aware. That's why I manage myself and master my natural self to where I can get things done that if I don't master, it wouldn't happen, right? So that's the key. Um, there are negatives and positives to this as well. Negatives, you can be reckless with your money. You can be rebellious with money. You can be manipulative with money. Been there, done that, all three. Positive, you can be happy when it comes to money. I do like when deposits come into my account. I get very happy when I get to spend money. I get very happy when I get gifts. I get very happy when I spend money, when I give money, when I save money, when I earn money. I just, I just get happy. I'm just a happy person. I'm playful. And helpful so help being helpful with money is very good because it's easy to give it's very easy for me to give money it's very easy for me to share with my friends it's very easy for me to tie them my church it's very easy for me and it's very easy for me to be playful with money so I like to have fun I can spend my money on having fun before I came on be, before I started my intentional financial journey back before my daughter was born in 2009 I was the type who would get paid, I used to work at KFC. Then I used to work at the gift shop at my uh, local hospital. I used to get paid and before the weekend was out, all of my check was spent. And then for like a week and a half, I would have like no money. And 
at that point, I used to just go to my mom or my sister and just eat everywhere I wanted and just like go hang out. And my dad would give me gas money whenever I asked for it. I was very childlike. I was very, very childlike, but I was, the, I was the youngest child. Like I was raised to be childlike. Like they didn't put much responsibility on me. Like for heaven's sake, I did not know how to cook until my daughter was born. And once she start, stopped breastfeeding, I was like, okay, I got to feed you food. Like I got to learn how to cook. Like it was, I was a child. Like it was, it's, it is what it is. So, um, like I said before, it's very easy to fall into either the parent like state where everything is well my mom did it this way so this is how i'm gonna do it my mom is very much like that my mom is like well i don't know no better this is what my mom did and it worked or it didn't kill me so this is how i'm gonna be with y'all you know like there is no oh even though i know that's not right I'm going to operate in my own beliefs and just let those go. She like, no, I'm holding on to these. Even though I know to do something different, I'm still holding on to these old beliefs. Or to be in your childlike ego state. Like, to be childish, to be reckless, to be, you know, manipulative, to be um, entitled, to be, oh, I deserve this. To just go out and impulsively spend. Like, be careful of these things. All right? And so what I want for you to do is homework time, get your pen, get your paper, take time to identify good and poor money habits that you have and which ego state leads to them. So that is your homework after this video. So if you are overspending, that is very childlike. If you are an impulsive spender, that is very childlike. If you hoard money because you feel like there's something that's going to happen or, you know, I got to save a bunch of money because you just never know if there's going to be another disaster. You just never know if there's going to be another health scare. That's a parent-like state. Hoarding money, parent-like state, blowing your budget, child-like state, over-giving or passive-giving, child-like. That's, that's super helpful. It's a, it can be a fine line from being helpful than being an enabler, right? Or giving too much, right? F being fearful. That can be either parent or child. Sometimes we get our fear of money, get our fear of making a lot of money or managing a lot of money, or we feel like having money is bad, or if you make too much money, that's that's not a good thing in the eyes of the Lord. All these different things we learn from our parents who just didn't know that some of these things weren't right. Remember, like, you can opt out of those beliefs. You don't have to keep those beliefs, right? Budgeting money monthly, that's adult-like state. Tracking your monthly expenses, adult-like. Having financial meetings with your husband or wife, adult-like state. Being able to manage money on a monthly basis adult like state right all these things are adult saving money adult like state tithing 10 percent of your income adult like state all these things all the good habits that you want to incur comes from the adult like state all right thank you so much for tuning in drop a comment below let me know if you want to i know i could be i'm an open book so i know my natural state is a childlike state my sister her natural state will be a parent, like say she really kind of keeps on the the path that my mom set for us. Like she cooks the same food my mom used to cook. I don't cook any type of meals that I used to eat in my childhood and she does. So identify whether you're mostly an adult like state, a parent like state, a child like state. Let me know in the comments how you're going to change and uh, how this video has helped you. Thank you so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.